before you get ready to start, Perry, we don't apologize in advance for what's about to happen. Um, and we don't care how much editing you have to do, but we still love you. You should have known better. Welcome to This Is My Bourbon Podcast. I'm Eric, and that's not Perry. You're welcome, everybody. Who is this? You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> that is rough. Uh, it's Swan, and I'm, I'm back. Swan's back. I am so happy right now. Um, Perry is currently on paternity leave. Yeah. Even though he is editing this right now, because he trusts us enough to make some stuff he doesn't trust us enough to edit this yeah it's a very short leash probably a good thing but swan is here i'm here two co-hosts make a right is that right no i mean that's that sounds good to me i think we can at minimum stumble through it you know we can at least get through this yeah. so we did the intro okay so okay this is swan i'm eric um um yeah so we're here if you want to Follow more stuff. If you want some bonus stuff, if you want to hear what Swan <laughs> wants on a deserted island, you can go to patreon.com slash podcast for as little as a dollar a month. You can support the show. But at $5, you get all that bonus content. You get the pregame chats. If we do pours from the floor, if we do sample irresistible or pop chickawawa, anything extra is on the Patreon. This episode comes out uncut. You'll get to hear all the stuff. Um, but patreon.com slash my bourbon podcast that is the best place to go swan we normally start the show out with either flying blind or sips and snacks now we haven't told anybody what we're doing um you actually figured out the main like theme of the show or the main portion my idea probably wouldn't go i was going to see if we could pair our favorite um instagram posts that we share with each other in private Probably not the best idea. No, no, absolutely not. Perry would not approve. Um, but we, we would not be able to be on camera ever again if we did that. So we've got a ton of snacks to get through. So we're going to do a little a little small flying blind. I want to pour you something. Um, flying blind is a segment where one of us blinds each other um, with a pour of bourbon, whiskey, or anything in between. I've already poured this in a little sample bottle. Gonna give Swan just just a little bit because we got plenty to get through. I have not done this in forever. Ooh, back in the saddle, baby. So you try you try that. Tell me what you think. We'll do we'll do the normal proof, age, all that stuff. I'm gonna be awful at this. I'm telling you right no, now. No, you're not. It's okay. Got this. It's like riding a bike. Yeah. With no seat. With no... <laughs> what am I sitting on? <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to enjoy that. If I did, I think I would have discovered things about myself at that point. Well, there's always the first time for everything. That's true. That's true. Hmm. Oh, that is so different than what we just had. I know. It is. It is a different animal. All right, I'm going to start with proof. Okay. I'm going to take a guess here. It's got some like nice honey and stuff in there, but proof-wise, I'm thinking like 105. Close. You're you're over just a tad. Okay. 101 maybe. You're over just a barely. Okay. 100. 100 proof. He got Nailed it. Nailed it. Yeah, it's no, it's good. It's got a little honey. It's got a little uh caramel, almost a little like tobacco on the Ooh, on the mouth I like there. Those notes. Yeah, uh, so, I mean, it's real classic. I mean, I've been away from bourbon long enough because I did scotch for a hot minute, too, which... Stop. Stop yep. this. Time out, you know. Uh, but, you know, it, you get the classic it's bourbon notes yeah. on there, but it is it is nice. It's definitely, it drinks like it's older. I'm going to guess around like eight, uh, six to eight years. Nailed it. Six years old. Okay. I told you you could do this. <laughs> Um, and I'm going to guess that it's probably a, uh, a smaller distillery. Okay. It doesn't seem like it's got one of the profiles of like one of the big guys. 
Well, it's hard to say. I will let you be the judge of that when I tell you when I tell you what it is. Do you think this is from around here, Kentucky? You think it's Indiana? Anything like that? Definitely not Texas. Definitely not Texas. Uh, I don't think it's MGP. If I had to guess. Um, and it doesn't feel like it's finished. I'm going to guess it's probably Kentucky or a Tennessee non-Dickel distillery. Ding, 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 Kentucky. Okay. Now, last question. What type of bourbon do you think this is? I don't know. Um, I'm going to guess it's probably high rye. Mm, interesting. You are wrong. Which, oh, what is it here? It's a weeder. Oh, it doesn't drink like it. I know. But I haven't had a weeder in a long time. This one does not drink like it. Now, uh, we had a little bit of one of my new favorites on the pregame chats, but this is another new favorite of mine that I think is like, I don't think my initial review on the show justifies what this has turned into, like after it's set for a little bit and stuff, like I, I can't get enough of this stuff. So this is Bardstown Bourbon Company. Okay. And this is their origin, the weeded bourbon. Put it up there on the camera. Nice. Um, it focuses as well as I do. Yeah. Um, but we reviewed this on one of the episodes and absolutely loved it. It's 100 proof, six years, 53% uh, corn, 39% wheat, and then 8% malted barley. Oh, that's real heavy wheat. And this thing is only like $49. I mean, to me, that's that's worth it right there. Hell yeah, it's worth it. I love this bottle, man. Like, I I don't even know how much they made of it. Like, I've only seen a few bottles on the shelf, so I'm really curious to whether I'm going to keep being able to get this or if I'm going to have to slow down on that. Well, at least makes me happy that I know they're going to do a lot of sourcing. Right. So even if they're not putting it out underneath their label, somebody probably will. Right. So that's that's nice. So going back to that question, small distillery or one of the big guys, what what would you consider Barstown Bourbon Company? Oh, to me, I mean, they're they're going to be a big guy. I think they're like teenager big. Yeah, they're, yeah. Exactly. You know, you've got like Heaven Hill, you've got, you know, Wild Turkey. They're like the old dad big where like, you know, when you're small, like everybody looks like a giant and you're like, they got big balls and stuff like that. And yeah, they're, they're the old man big, but now you've got this teenager coming up who just took a growth spurt, you know, they're discovering themselves and they're making a name for themselves. Yeah. I mean, it's almost like they just beat Dad in basketball for the first time, Big, you know? Oh, that's good. Putting them down a little bit. Dad's pissed. Yeah, Dad's pissed. Threw something at them. I'm sure, you know, maybe, you know, Eddie Russell may have egged one of their um, Rick houses or something after they beat them in basketball. <laughs> Got really mad. But he's like, you know what? I I respect it. So. I do love the idea of Harlan Wheatley out there egging it and TPing their oh Harlan their Wheatley. I, he probably just punches a window or something. There he just go. breaks a window with his fist, and you just know <laughs> he's slam. No, he's the type of dad that probably just slams the door, and you're like, okay, that's that's the same as like committing murder. Like you, mm. the door slam is worse than actually seeing him punch somebody. That's fair. Yeah. Because have you seen his arms? No, they're huge. I I mean every picture I've seen is from here up. I saw him one time at the meat market. You see everybody at the meat market. He was actually cutting his own, like, he. they had, like, the ribs and stuff, and they just let him cut the ribs. And he did it with his hand. Did he, like, stare at people on the other side of the counter and be like, this could be you? Yeah, and he'd cry chop it with his hand. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. If you're ever at Buffalo Trace, ask him about it if you see him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, Swan, what, we know you said you haven't been drinking a lot. What what have you been doing? What what have you been getting into lately? Have you drunk anything other than scotch? Uh, not not really. I any, mean, to be honest like with pop, you, soda. That yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got you got me there. Okay. Um, but no, I actually had a really big collection, and I eventually got to the point where I was like, I move a lot. This is a huge hindrance. I'm gonna try to get this down from 150 bottles down to maybe like 12. So you just start drinking. So I would. Initially, I actually reached out to you guys, and I was like, I've got all these bottles. What do you guys want? You guys bought a good portion of yep. them. I gave away some as gifts. Um, 
sold a couple to some other people, just, you know, bottles half gone, half MSRP. And then the rest of them, I started drinking. Some were great, some were not great, uh, but got it down to almost nothing now. So do you ever just... Do you ever just go and just buy one bottle to have, or do you are you pretty much just? Yeah, I have. Uh, in the past, it's been T W Samuels. Nice, just a, a good like, classic. I feel like that was always one of your go tos. You you always bring that up. Yeah, no, I think if you go to Kentucky and you want a bottle that you're going to have a couple people like take drinks out of and and not worry about it, it's still twenty one bucks. I think with tax. Any uh, any restaurant pours or anything in the last little bit? Yeah, I actually have had some. I went to Frank and Dino's here in Lexington, uh-huh, uh-huh. and they've got a prosciutto old fashioned, and that thing was awesome. I was a little skeptical because you're getting it with ice, and you got prosciutto in there, and you're like, I don't know how it's gonna work. I mean, that feels like almost getting like uncooked bacon or something inside uh-huh. your cocktail, but it was good. I had a um, when you said uncooked bacon, I had a um, uh, cocktail. Did you have? I, sh- I think I asked you this at Epcot, at one of the festivals. They had that, um, that one cocktail that had like the piece of meat on top of it. Did you- I did not get that one. I saw somebody walking around with it though. Was that like a Jim Beam or like a Jack Daniels something? It reminded me of that because I got a really fatty piece of meat on mine, like a little riblet type mm-hmm. thing, and it was wild. But I ended up liking it, so I don't know. Maybe I'll just start eating raw bacon cocktails. Well, they're doing like. I've seen it a couple of places. They'll do fat washed bourbon. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And that um that's a that's a heck of a concept right there. Yeah, um, I don't know about that. That might be too mutant for me. Yeah. But I mean, I would at least give it a try. It's just every place that's had one, I saw something I knew I was gonna like, and I was like, Well, let's get the let's get the first one I know I'll like first. And if I want a second, I'll I'll try that. Right. I never have. Um if, yeah, if you're listening and you're like, Who is Swan? Swan was the bourbon finder in the mm-hmm. beginning. Um, he then joined the show and was the host for co-host. No, he was actually the host. Perry was the co-host. Um, and uh, actually, Swan started the show and Perry took it from him. Isn't that how it goes? Yeah, I showed up day one, rock band mics, me, Kurt, Tanner. You know, it was great. No, I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> no, Perry started the show. I, I hopped in around like uh, episode like 34-ish, I think. Uh, and it was only because I had found a really old bottle of Wild Turkey um, Rare Breed. And then the, and the new- only way that Perry could drink it is if he let you on the show if he let me bark into the mic yeah um but no i i found that they had just done the switch from like 112 something to 116 something and i was like perry you know it'd be really cool what if we did all three of these and he i was like thinking like oh i hope he doesn't ask me to go on the show because i don't know if i want to do that and he's like yeah that'd be great I'll be over at Kurt's house and I'll, I'll see you there. We'll, we'll, we'll hop on there. How would you feel about that? And I was like, oh, I don't know about that, man. I'm nervous. And there I am just sitting on Kurt's couch, just shaking. Like, I don't know if I can do this. Um, but gr- granted the podcast was still pretty small at the time, but, um, yeah, it was, I, I did it for like a hundred episodes you after did. that. You, uh, you actually were the co-host when I started listening. Um, and I had big shoes to fill because people enjoyed all the stuff you did i got death threats a few times um what did you do with swan i said i didn't have a choice in it like he he told me to like join and then you know i so i had to like shut down all lines of communication until kind of ever they got used to me Mm -hmm. and then you made a couple of appearances and all that so well you did tell him about me being locked in the basement for a few years right yeah yeah okay okay yeah that one's a tough talk about a lot i don't like I don't like to bring that up. I know how you feel about that. And, you know, I don't know how new people take it sometimes when they hear that somebody was locked in a basement for so long. Mm -hmm. But you survived. Uh, You flapped your little wings and got out. Yeah, I'm a stronger bird for it, you know. Stronger bird. I will probably lock you back up in my basement now that I've got you here. That's fair. So just be prepared. What have I been drinking? I guess I should say something. I actually, you see that Rebel 10 over there? Uh, not with my glasses off, but I'm going to pretend for the for the you, shot you here that I can. It. You saw it, yeah, yep. it's right there, that, right yeah. over there. there. 
I pulled out the Rebel 10 that sucked a long time ago. I thought something went bad in it, and now it's got good again. Okay. You're going heavy with the weeders. I am. I'm a full-blown tater. <laughs> I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Like, I've been on a big wheat kick, uh, so, yeah. But that Rebel 10, I had a couple of pours of it, and I was honestly shocked that it got better because I was just trying to finish it off. That's fair. So it's been pretty good. I haven't had really much of anything else. I think I tried to, I was going to say I had a cougar bait the other day at Banners. Nothing exciting. I think if, if I have anything, I usually post about it. I don't know. I don't know. Well, guys, I want to tell you uh, real quick what I have also been drinking recently. Uh, and that's my daily dose of Magic Mind with their Mental Performance Elixir. And as everybody knows, uh, we just introduced a new member of the Ritter family into the world and through late nights of Crying Baby and podcast editing and then early mornings with my day job. Uh, I've been drinking Magic Mind alongside my morning coffee or my morning Celsius, just depending on what I'm using uh, for caffeine to get me going. Uh, it's really helped uh, me to reclaim my brain uh, with their magic formula of real ingredients uh, and magic properties. And uh, I've been drinking Magic Mind, uh, you know, to, to really kind of keep myself focused um, and just, just get myself back into the groove of feeling like a normal human. Uh, again, in many ways. And I've got to be honest with you, too. Things have felt a lot smoother. They felt a lot more like how I was pre-baby number two. Things are much more on track. Uh, and kind of, uh, you know, one of the things I love about Magic Mind is uh, they're, they're doctor validated um, after over 10 years of development hundreds of recipe iterations, and over 200 scientific studies behind every ingredient. They also donate five cents for each bottle sold to mental health charities that help homeless communities in the U.S., uh, and they are also 100% carbon neutral, and they ship internationally uh, to over 65 countries. Magic Minds uh, brought me less stress, more focus and clarity, and uh, just a massive increase in steady energy uh, throughout my day. And uh, I want to make sure that we offer you guys, uh, the listeners here too, uh, the chance to try their productivity shots uh, as well. So if you click the link in our podcast description, uh, or if you head to magicmind.com slash bourbon, uh, that's magicmind.com slash bourbon, and use the code bourbon20, uh, that's bourbon20 at checkout, uh, you can get 48% off your first subscription or 20% off a one-time purchase. Uh, and uh, once again, that's our link below, magicmind.com slash bourbon, and use the code bourbon20 at checkout. And thanks so much to Magic Mind for supporting Tim Bip. Now, what do you guys got going on here next? You ready to get into this pairings? Yeah, you want me to talk about it? Yeah, tell us what we're doing. All right, so Eric obviously has never paired anything in his life, so we're going to start today. You got to walk me through this. Yep. Uh, so w what I did is I went out and I got some international snacks. I actually live up in the Cincinnati area, so I went to Jungle Gyms up there. If you want to go, it's huge. Be prepared to walk a lot. Uh, but I picked up some in international... In the jungle? In the jungle, yeah. Um, and, and I picked up some international snacks, and we're going to pair them. Uh, but I didn't want to do just the standard, leave it open to, you know, pick any bottle on the shelf, that kind of thing, for a couple of reasons. I remember when I was doing the podcast, not everybody has access to the wonderful bottles you guys have. So It's true. It does make it hard to pair every once in a while. I'm I, guilty of, you know... When I when I attempted to pair, and I've never paired anything, I attempted to pair, and I was trying to use unicorns, and people were like, "What are you doing? I can't get that." And yeah. Like, so yeah, I uh, appreciate you. Yeah. Additionally, we're doing international snacks, so I wanted to get bottles that you could either find internationally, or we can find here at least in Kentucky, in uh, 50 mLs, airplane bottles, shooters, whatever you want to call them, uh, the little small ones that you get up by the registers. We're, I, I, they had to be in that for us to be able to take it internationally. Yeah. Uh, now, I mean, I'm sure airlines are going to have their own thing about what you can and can't take, but 
I got stuff that we could find here in Kentucky, and I got them at uh, Party Source, also up near Cincy. Uh, I'm sorry. It's in northern Kentucky. I was going to say. Northern Kentucky. <laughs> Get it right. Should have seen the look you gave me. Uh, but, yeah, we got some some fun stuff. I'm, I'm going to just run through them real quick okay. so that we can kind of go over at least what our options are. We are not going to be drinking all of these. Uh, I'd be definitely staying in the basement at that point. Uh, but we've got uh, Maker's Mark, Rebel 100, Bullet Bourbon, New Riff, Arguably, that one's about the hardest one to find out of the bunch. Honestly, like I, I've, when we've done we've done new riff picks together, and it's one of my favorite things is seeing them bottling these. They yeah. have that little mini, like if you're watching on the camera, like it's just like their normal bottle, and there's a little bottling line where they're just bottling the little shooters. It's so cute. Yeah. They're cute. I've had quite a few of them. I gave them out as gifts one year. Just Did you wrap them individually? No. See, I got a lot of stepbrothers, so oh. we, we just I just they don't throw them in stockings, that. you know. Um, Even the underage ones? I mean, of course. I like you. I like your style. That's that's who wants them most. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did not do that for the record. Um, we also got Four Roses, just the small batch. Uh, Larceny, Wild Turkey 101, the regular... Old Forester 86, because that is probably the one you'll find most, at least. Um, Do they have another shoot, Old Forester shooter? I didn't see the the 100. I was oh. looking for just the, the, the what do they call it, the Prime or yeah. something. The, the yeah. orange one. Yeah. Elijah Craig. Uh, Jack Daniels, which you guys can have that debate at home. We will not be having that one today, I don't think. Well. And okay. uh, Woodford Reserve. There we so, go. Good little line. A lot of stuff that. I know for sure we've had at least once. A couple of weeders in here. A couple of weeders. Um, and, you know, it's stuff that you, you can definitely find on the shelf. Now, I will say out of this bunch, the ones you're probably going to find most are going to be Old Forester, Jack Daniels, Maker's Mark, and, and Woodford. Uh, so I'm going to I'm gonna try to include that in the pairings because I feel like that's the ones you're probably going to find the most. Okay. So how do you want to do this? That's a great question. Uh, we got three things to pair. Oh, yeah. Introduce the, the snacks. Yeah. So Can you pronounce any of these snacks? <laughs> that's a great that's a great call out there. Uh, no, I can't pronounce them. Uh, but the first one is uh, it's a conscious. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Uh, I'm sure Fred Gilbert will uh, give me some lessons on pronunciation after this. Uh, but basically... Conchas from Bimbo? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's meant to just be like a sweet bread with a crackle top or it's have so some light. sort of like kind of sweetness on top. Uh, it, it's usually from Mexico. They may have other places, uh, but we're going to probably be starting with that one. We've got another one that's a, it is a moon pie. Don't get me wrong, but it's called a Choco pie. And Choco we've got, pie. Yeah. And was it black sugar milk tea flavor? So we're going to be trying that out. Um, and then the last one, I can't pronounce at all. It, it, this is, it, it's got bourbon on the package. I'm going to say that. Bourbon Lamondo? Lamonde? Uh, I am not sure what the flavor is, but I got this out of the Japan section. Huh. So we'll uh, we'll do some pairing. We'll see who comes up with the with the best pairing there. All right. So um, I think what we should do. I want you to do the initial pairing. We'll okay. do just like a drop, and then I'm going to see if I can do a different pairing, and we'll compare. Okay. That works. I've right. thought about it a little bit. I've had some time to think on it. I actually got some plate. I was actually prepared today oh, you were, for this. You were Look well prepared. Look at you. I got some napkins. Just to add for the audience as well, I did make sure that everything I got was on the softer side, so you won't be hearing us crunch, hopefully, mm. for a you know good what? amount of time. If you're warning, there's going to be eating going on over the next <laughs> little bit. And you know what? If you don't like it, then fast forward or turn the turn the captions on. Do you think it says crunchy? It says like mouth moving. Maybe say, I don't know. You ever watch? Have you ever put something on like subtitled and then it subtitles almost everything? It's like leaves ruffling. Yeah. Like wind blowing. Oh yeah. Lips smacking. I've had the closed captions on since I was a kid. I used to do that. I used to do that because I was afraid I'd get in trouble. Oh, what? What do you mean? 
How were you going to get in trouble for closed captioning? For what I was, no, like if they heard what I was watching. Oh, what were you watching? You know. <laughs> oh, man. Orgasm happening. <laughs> I thought you were just going to talk about anime. I mean, half well, of it's yeah. uh, well, dubbed that, anyway. Well, true. Yeah, I'm. That is one. I've told this story before, but I love telling this story. I don't know. If, I don't know if you knew this, but when I was like maybe 12, 11, 12, I don't know. It's when anime started like really picking up, but you still had to buy like VHS or yeah. DVD. And there was a store in the mall called uh, Suncoast. Okay, and. Living back home, there was no like Sam Goody or Suncoast. Sam Goody and Suncoast were kind of like the same company. So we made a trip to Lexington, me and Grand Graham. And I was buying Dragon Ball Z stuff. She knew I watched Dragon Ball Z. I was buying, you know, I saved my money up. But she like had it like, I don't remember on the card or she kept the money. And I snuck a 17 plus anime in the middle of it. And the guy checking it out stopped for a second. And I was like, I got to start sweating. And, but Granger was the one paying for it. Yeah. She had, she technically was paying for it and he just kept going. And he kind of gave me the, like, I see what you're doing here. So that was, that was the first time I ever used my grandmother to do something illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is some fantastic wording right there. Yeah. Anyway, we're uh, back to the pairing. So, <laughs> all right. So we're going to pair this bun thing. Yeah. All right. I'm going to have R- it. Rip and half. Yeah. Oh my. I-, I got this one on purpose because I know oh. you usually go for stuff you can dunk, right? Yeah. So I, I like want- dunking, but I also like just pouring it over. Yeah. I'll get that out just in case you want it. But um, yeah. So this one, it'll definitely soak up some some burger. Yeah. Yeah. So what? So what's the flavor on this? Take a bite of it. That's probably a good start. I've had some of it already, not today, but it's it's just a slight vanilla flavor. Oh. It is. It's just like a little sweet bun. Yeah. Nothing crazy. All right. You tell me what you would pair with this. I'm going to go with something that's cinnamon heavy. Okay. So I'm, I'm thinking... Probably going something wheat, or I'm not wheat, I'm sorry, rye. I'd probably okay. go wild turkey 101 just for the extra proof and, uh, and and getting that in there. All right. So that's probably where I would go with this. The Four Roses, it's up there too. Okay, wild turkey. I can't even, I can't even open you. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, here we go. All right. I'm going to use the rocks glass here. The mini hair in there. Just a little. Pour how much you want there, and I think normally we do pour overs and stuff, but with this size and we got these glasses, I think this is going to be a good dunker. This is a this is a good dunker for sure. All right, we are dunking this little bun in there. Ooh, dripping baby! Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Good choice. You know what that turns it into? What? Tell me. I, I like the way you describe this stuff. That's why I I wanted so, to bring it. You said cinnamon heavy, and I was initially thinking this was going to be more of like a cinnamon bun, but this actually goes a little nutty. Okay, it tastes like a pecan roll. Yeah, no, I could see that. It it does have a little bit. It of that. adds that kind of like kind of that. I think pecan rolls have some cinnamon. It has all that baking spices in it, but. There is a pecan kind of nutty note that comes into this that I really like. Well done. Yeah, no, I, I like that. I want to see what you come up with this. I, I will say I wanted to go cinnamon just because I thought it would work. Right. These typically, at least from what I've been told, I could be wrong. I should probably do some more research for hop on a podcast and talk to everybody. Nah, don't worry about it. Yeah. Nobody um, researches around here. Only these, Perry. He's not here. That's that's fair. Um, th- these are usually something you would have with coffee. I can see that. And you know what? I was actually going with my pairing was going to be cocoa kind of chocolatey. Okay. And out of what we have here, honestly, the four roses, I think out of all these is 
probably the most chocolate heavy. It's got a little bit of floral, but it's almost like chocolate, mm, kind of chocolate cherry. Not as much like usually a weeder. I get strawberry, um, mm-hmm. but four roses is kind of chocolate cherry to me. So I think I want to try that to see if we can add like, yeah, like the coffee, chocolate, kind of cocoa to it. I like how the things we picked are like 10 miles from each other. Yeah. I mean, all Kentucky. Oh, that's the wrong cup. Well, except for that Jack Daniels. True. We're we're not drinking that one, though. All right. Four Roses, small batch. Oh, yeah, dude. Going to do a dunk. Oh, that's good. That's different, but it's good. That's yeah, it's a completely different pairing than what you did. You went the cinnamon route. I went the chocolate coffee route. And I gotta say, I think you win that round. I'll take I, it. I mean, this is my first time pairing. First time. You're doing good for your is first that okay? time. Is that yeah, okay? That's I mean, okay. I was trying to do something a little different. You you did hit it on the head though. I could see this being dunked in coffee. I think I got more chocolate. Which I liked. I don't think it gave me that kind of cocoa kind of leaning toward like coffee note that I thought it would. So, gotcha. All right, so I, I did want to toss something else into this too. Okay. Now okay. that we've we we've kind of limited We're ourselves getting... on what we could pick, right? I wanted to see if you had free reign. Free reign. What bottle are you grabbing? And I'll even open it up to beer because I think honestly, with this one, if I was picking for me just to start. They do have some of those Mexican hot uh, hot chocolate beers. Yes. That have that kind of flavoring in there. I think that would be fun with this. I honestly, there is a, there is a wilderness trail pick I have over there somewhere. We won't go get it, but it's the one that I get the most strawberry jelly out of. Okay. I would love to see what this was like if, we both did really dark pairings. Mm-hmm. We went cinnamon, baking spices, cocoa, all that. I would love, imagine this, and it had like a strawberry jam feeling. I mean, I'd, I'd be okay with that. We might come back to that. Maybe if we have time. We'll see. Yeah. But I would like to see a lighter pairing for this, like light as in reds and like when you think colors, kind of reds and orange, even like an orange, any kind of like fruit filling with this, Mm -hmm. I think would be delicious. You have the weeders on here, but none of those, none of the ones on the table, I think really scream strawberry. Maker's Mark a little bit. The Rebel 100, I got, I know exactly what I'm doing with that one, but but yeah, I think seeing this adding the fruit, and that's what the that's the fun thing about pairing. So I've heard, so I've heard, I've yeah. been researching, I have been researching how to pair. Is you know, there's so many different ways to pair, and so many different combinations that can make different things. It's like it's just like when you have a bourbon by itself. Yeah, everything's subjective. I hate that word, but yeah, you can make a good snack can be made into. A bunch of different things. Gotcha. So, as somebody that's new to pairing, I wanted to I wanted to ask you a question, get okay. your perspective okay. on it. Because okay. I, I feel like with this one, I had a little time to think. Don't get me wrong. Gotcha. I picked out the snacks. I was like, I want to go cinnamon. Gotcha. But do you, if if you were to hypothetically be really good at pairing, like you were you were really into this, uh-huh. would you be looking more for like kind of same same? I want the flavors to be on the same level and just make it a better that thing? Or would you look and be looking more so for like these two things make a new thing that I like? It depends on the mood. Okay. I think that's all a mood. Like, how are you feeling today? Like, do you want a challenge? Do you want to try to do, do you have a peanut butter snack and you want to bring that grape note in there and make a peanut butter and jelly? Or do you have a peanut butter snack and you're like, give me the most nutty peanut buttery thing ever because I just want nothing but peanut butter in my mouth. That's it, fair. it really is just like, it's just like, what are you craving today? Are you craving a sandwich or are you craving like a solid piece of chocolate? So you just okay. want a solid piece of chocolate, then you go grab the most chocolatey thing you have and you have a chocolate overload. Gotcha. So it just depends on the mood. It's all about the mood. All about the mood. It's all about the mood. That's what I've heard. Yeah, that's what you. That's I read what you've it. Heard. Yeah. 
I read it. I heard it on a podcast. Once. I think you're. I think you're off to a good start on this this pairing stuff that we're looking at here. All right. Well, I appreciate you um, kind of guiding me through this yeah. as we go. So, what's the next snack? We're going to do the the moon pie. Yeah. So the choco pie. I actually have not had this one yet, so this will be a brand new one for me. But it's a black sugar milk tea choco pie, and it, it, it if you're not familiar with the choco pie, it looks just like uh, for anybody who's not watching a a moon pie. A moon pie. Um. So I'm curious. I mean, what's I, the feeling in it? Because this one has an extra layer of something. So this is black sugar milk tea. So just to kind of go over the kind of brief description I got from, uh, I'm going to name them out here. Name, Zopher. Name, Zopher. Don't Zopher. we know a Zopher? We know a Zopher. Yeah. Yeah. Good old Alfonso. Uh, he, he told me that uh, really this milk tea, what it is, is it's a tea that doesn't get lost as much when you start adding milk. It's a stronger tea. Uh, so hopefully that comes through a little bit, but. I'm not sure. I definitely want to give it a try before I start dunking in something. Okay. So let's try it. Hmm. I think you get that little feeling on the back end. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. this is moon pie. This is moon pie. Then all of a sudden there's this like. A little bit of herbal. Herbal. Like, yeah. Like it, it is like tea. I guess that's what I was saying. A little honey, maybe. Mm -hmm. Honey tea. I like that. It's like yeah. a little extra. Here you go to the moon pie. Let's make it a little bit more. Yeah, uh, it's international snacks. Don't get me wrong; I got more of them too. If you need another one, uh, so have you, you know, ever had a happy moment? Never. It says happy moment. Fully deprived thing. in life. I'm sorry. Oh, it's all good. No, I'm just kidding. I'm happy now. Be here with you. Yay! Yeah, <laughs> but uh, it's, first off, international snacks only. So we couldn't include the classic banana moon pie. Oh, the best moon pie. But it's pretty good. I, I'm not they did mad something at this. with this. I'm not mad at this. So what what are you picking after your initial taste? You know that's a that's a rough one. Are you um, going Are you going to go add some extra honey to it? You going to try to make this something else? You are going to add some extra chocolate to it? What are you thinking? Honestly, I want to lean into the kind of that herbal piece okay. of it. Add some more of it. I think the four roses would be good again, but I want to do something different. Okay. Let's see, herbal herbal. I don't know. I think it would be fun maybe to try the Woodford because they just have a little bit of everything, you know? Okay. That's their whole thing. It's just they've filled out Honestly, the flavor wheel. Woodford is kind of like, you don't know what you're going to get. Now, I'm going to put this one in my Glen, and I'm going to do a pour over on this one. You, f you feel free to dunk or do whatever you want to. But Woodford is kind of like the, the blind box of whiskey. Sometimes... It's pretty good. Yeah. Sometimes it's not. <laughs> Sometimes it's not. It's just not. <laughs> well, I mean, I at least for me, Woodford's always been like, if I don't have anything else to drink and it's there, I'm having it. But then additionally, it, it's great for people who are new or maybe are a little indecisive on what they like because it's a little lie. bit of everything. This is very, like, if you're going for that kind of, you know, herbal you say herbal? Herbal? I don't know. You can really hit the H in there if you really wanted to. You know? Herbal. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be fun in the post. <laughs> it is. It is. It's got some weird, like, it does kind of have like a potpourri slash tea note going on. A little bit. And, I mean, where it's got so much of everything in it, you might just be able to pull out what you want, you know? I mean, it's okay to pull it out whenever you want. That's fair. All right, let's Pour go. Pour over. It. Soak it up. Hmm. That's pretty good. I like that because it does, it honestly brings out more of those notes that we just said in the Woodford. Like it almost enhances the Woodford. Yeah. If I wanted the Woodford to be a little bit more bright, I would need something added to it. And this, this actually helped the whiskey, I think. That's fair. I mean, I'm not a big Woodford fan as is. Like, if I'm going just for a Woodford product, it's probably the Double Oak. Yeah, true. Do you have another one of those? Yeah. I kind of ate my half. You have a whole box? I'll leave some here with you if you'd Hell like. Oh yeah. Choco pie. All right. So, that is actually an interesting pairing, too, because... We talked about how when you pair, sometimes you want to make something new. Sometimes you want to enhance it and just overload it. There are times, I've read, 
apparently. You studied up. Studied up. There are times that people pair, and they pair something they don't normally like in order to make it better, whether mm. it's making the snack better or making the whiskey better. And I think you actually just made Woodford better. That's fair. That's just my opinion. I think you enhanced what it already had, the snack already had, and you actually made the whole thing even better. Do you know? Sure, drop it on down. Do you see how... Can I show the camera here how perfectly... I ripped that in half. You killed it. It's not easy to do with the marshmallow. No. All right. So here's what we're going to do. I... I need to spice this thing up. Mm, Okay. I do need a little... A little bit more of the baking spices. I need no. Who? Okay. I need to do two. We're going to do two small ones. So I want to see if we can take this Elijah Craig and get more of like a snickerdoodle, almost like a a chocolate snickerdoodle going on. I like it. But I also want to take this Maker's Mark. Just oh. do. We'll just do a little drop and. I want to. Guatemala's calling me. You think that's Perry, like hiding his number, trying to like? <laughs> <laughs> that's a level of desperation I've not seen before. <laughs> uh, but I want to see if we can do a little bit of a, maybe, almost like what we said with the first one. Mm-hmm. Maybe add a little fruit, a little bit of fruit filling to that. So okay, I am going to start out with. We'll start out with the Elijah Craig. And let's see if we can make this a snickerdoodle. I should start pairing. No, I mean, if I start pairing. I mean, you're pretty good at this. I think you could. Have you ever had Instagram before? No, I'm not. My mom won't let me be on social media. I think you'd be good at that Instagram My times are always blocked. All right, pour over. Okay. I'm not mad at that one. That's pretty good. I'm not mad at that I one. I think at that's all. automatically better than mine. I'm curious to see what your other one is. I will say I do enjoy that one more than the um, Woodford. All right, now we're going to try the Maker's Mark. Mm. You know what? I don't think the Maker's Mark has enough proof to really. Like bring out more notes in this pairing. That's fair. I know Elijah Craig is only what four proof points higher than Maker's Mark, but yeah. I think the spice in the Elijah Craig is what it needed. I'm going Elijah Craig with this one. I am too. I think that's the best out of the three. I agree with the makers. I think it's important to point out too that like when you do travel internationally, they get screwed when it comes to proof. Most other places, not everybody can have those big cast drink stuff like right, we do. Right, right. Or it's not bourbon, if they can. Like, I know the Aussies, I think they even get something below 80 proof sent to them. Below 80 proof? hmm Yeah, I'm wanting to say they get some that are the 70s. I forget where it's at in there, but it's... Does uh, even have a taste? Well, it's just water. Oh, so it's just yeah. water. It, well, I mean, to Chris and Lil, the Aussies that we know, yeah, that, mean, that's just their tap water. They, I do feel like they, they, they can handle bourbon like it is water. Like they, I tried to keep up with them one time. They're more than happy to tell you about it. I can't even keep up with them on the internet. All over the place. They're all over the place. They're crazy. Yeah. Crazy Aussies. One more pairing. Is that what we got? Yeah. And this is the one where uh, we don't know what it is. I mean, yeah, I have no idea. The, the label, it looks like a cinnamon stick inside. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if I had to describe it, bourbon, it almost looks like Lumonde? a chocolate covered, like a milk chocolate covered something, like a cookie that's been rolled up a little bit. It's veiny. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a. It looks like a little wiener. <laughs> <laughs> it's got veins. Yeah, but I have no idea what it tastes like. Ooh, it smells good though. It does smell good. Oh, this is this is my kind of. Oh yeah. That's how we pair sticks. Mm. Oh. It's like a cannoli. A little bit, yeah. I was not expecting it to fall apart like that. No. Ooh, I like this. This is really bad for the mic, if you're listening. Mm, 
I don't know. Mm, crunchy. Ooh, I like that. I have no idea what to pair this with. Hmm. I think. Hmm. I don't know either. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. This is one of those things that you could probably put about anything with it, and it's going to be good. But You're it's just, which one's the best? See, I, I, this cookie kind of cookie inside on it. It's kind of throwing me for a loop because it's like familiar, but it's not. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I've had this. It, it's like a cannoli, like a chocolate cannoli. So I think I know what I would want to add to that, but you got to go first. That's fair. Oh, you know what it reminds me of? Did you ever get those? I think they're called pirouette cookies, but they're like the straw looking thing with the filling in the yes, center. Yes, 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 yes. They remind me a little bit of that. Yeah, I can see that. All right. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to. Go ahead and pour this in here. We're getting a little infinity glass going. Go for it. I might I might dip in the Glen Karen. I might get wild with Do it. it. I got more. We got extra. You can dip in anything. You can dip any. You can dip. You can dock. You can do whatever you want to <laughs> in my basement. Oh, no. He's doing it, folks. I'm going to do it. He I grabbed the Jack Daniels. I I personally think that this I know where is you're going a with little this. chocolatey. And it's got almost a little bit of, uh, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just its just like a nice sugar cookie with, with some chocolate. So I'm going to add some banana into it. You're on, you know what? You're on the same path as me. And I'm just going to tell you, we're going to have a good comparison because I, I was going, I'm going to get the old Forster because I thought that would add banana to it. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty damn happy with that. Oh dude. Oh dude, that'd be delicious. Take something you don't like. What well, as much. That's honestly so good. Yeah. Wow. It does. Like there is it's almost like if you took the cannoli, but you did like a banana cream filling. So you got like the cookie on the outside and then like, is this chocolate on that? What is the icing on this? Well, see, here's the problem is, uh, I mean, we're both from Eastern Kentucky or have roots there. Yeah. We can't read to start with. And then you no. put it in this. I have mean, you watched enough anime to figure out what's no. going on here? So I put subtitles on it and it's English. I can't, I can't read Japanese subtitles. I can't even what. understand when they talk. I'll download that Duolingo app. I'll get after it. And then in a couple I'm of months. I'm going to have to catch up on Duolingo uh, games. Yeah, in a couple months, we, we've got it. We'll we'll translate it and get it out to the people. All right. So I was I was going to go Old Forster because I was thinking the same thing. We were on the same. So let's try this. I want to see which banana. These freaking bottles, man. That's hard to open. I want to see which banana is better. It's funny, too, because I tried the Jack Daniels after this. The banana is not super apparent when you just drink the whiskey mm. after this, but when you it put it tastes together. It kind of like trash. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. That's the one thing that's not overtly from Kentucky here, and you're like, that's trash. But it, but honestly, it, it doesn't taste good. Jack Daniels Black Label does not taste great on its own. No, it doesn't. It, I mean, it's meant to be a mixer, and it's meant to be very widely available, and it yeah. does both those things very well. Yeah, so, all right, Old Forster, 86 proof. I'm not going to lie. When I was picking these out, I was like, this is going to be the hardest thing to pair by far, but I think it's about my favorite. Dude, so I don't know if that gave it any banana. I think that made it grape. I, I poured way heavy on there. I think that's grape, and it's almost like a... Grape and chocolate cookie. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. I don't know if I've ever got grape. I'm not going to lie. Forcer. Every once in a while, I hear a pairing note from you and other people. I mean, if you were to do pairing yeah, and, and you I, were to give notes. Right. Um, and I'm like, he's full of shit. I, there's no way it tastes like that. Tastes like grape. <laughs> <laughs> That really does. I wish. I wish everybody. I wish everybody was as honest. As, like I know we're close. We talk. We talk all the time. We send each other very inappropriate things, <laughs> so we we can say what we want to each other. I wish every once in a while people would just be like, I feel comfortable enough to tell him he's full of shit. 
so I could be like, I am not full of shit. Yeah, I mean, it, you get it with everything, too. Like, when they have new releases of bourbon, and you're looking over it, and they're like, marzipan. I was like, wow, who paid you to put that in there, you know? like, See, the problem is people only feel confident to just tell me I suck most of the time. Oh, well, no. I mean, usually, like, when I see those things, I was like, I just don't feel like... A and B should make what the, what he got. Like it just shouldn't work. But then I do a pairing, which by the way I do not do very often personally. You're really good at it. And I I just yeah, for whatever reason I was like, there's no way he's getting grape and raspberry and all this. That tastes like grape. It really does. Yeah, it really does. Wow. So what? So we've done three. I mean, we've opened almost all these. Is there anything? We've had all the snacks. We've had most of the bottles. Is there anything you see here with the snacks we have left? We got some of the bun left. You know, you've got boxes of the stuff over there. Is there one thing? I want to end it on one thing that we haven't done that you're like, I've tried all this. I know exactly what I want to do. I mean, I kind of want to go back and try the Rebel 100 with the, with the bun. Well, let's do it. Because you said you know what you're doing with that one. And I, I want to see if it works. All right. Also, I just really like Rebel 100. Dude. Underrated it, bottle. Do you, Are you mad that it's not called Rebel Yell anymore? I mean, a little bit, just because it's nostalgic seeing yeah. that on there. But they left the same label that nobody wants to look at. They just take, take the yell off and add in the 100. I wonder if they have like a stockpile of like the Rebel Yells just sent there. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, I still... Up until a couple of months ago, still had one that was a Rebel Yell tent. I've got a Rebel Yell 100 bottle back there. It's got about one drink left in it. Probably so aired out that it doesn't even taste like anything. But I couldn't get rid of it because of the nostalgia. Yeah, that's fair. Rebel Yell 100 is just always one of those, you know, when people do the whole, like, this is your whatever alternative. Like, it really is. Like, you want, like an alternative to Weller that's like pretty much holds its own and stuff as the, in yeah. the weeder. All right. Let's see what this got. Mm, okay. All right. I'm going to say something weird here. I'm getting into my, my whiskey mutant. Do it. Did you get a moment of bubble gum in there? You know, I didn't get exactly bubble gum. I got pink, but like pink popped in my head, which would equal bubble gum to me. Like there is a, it's almost like the bubble gum that has the powder on it. Mm. Yeah. No, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Like the big, like you pull it out or like yep. the big league big, chew. Big league chew, the what roll of fruit, the bubble by the roll or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bubble that foot. Thing. Bubble foot. Bubble foot. Yeah. Bubble, 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 bubble. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah, it is. It There's a pink note in there. It's almost like sugar kind of strawberry, not like. A dark like strawberry jelly or anything. That's interesting. Yeah, I do think the other pairings were better, but I wanted to try that because uh, Rebel One Hundred is one of those things. I feel like I it fits with everything. It does, especially with your wallet too, because it's very affordable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, all these pairings. What What's your top pairing of the day? So I think the two that stood out as the best were the Jack Daniels with the the bourbon brand of cookies i don't know <laughs> i don't know what to call them <laughs> blasphemy yeah the blasphemy bear those right there yeah uh th- those were, that was really good the banana flavor that came out mixed with the chocolate like it, it felt like it was meant to be that flavor uh and then the pairing that you did with the choco pie the milk tea one and um and the elijah craig i thought was really good i have to agree um i think my favorite was the elijah craig and the choco and I, I loved everything about that last pairing that we did. I love the Jack Daniels with that. I love that we got like a banana cannoli. I love that we got the grape note on there. The first, this like bun thing mm-hmm. is really hard to figure out what the best thing is because it's so light and so kind of like, it's like, give me anything. Mm-hmm. It's like a whore in high school. <laughs> Just takes it all. That's fair. It will take it all and will never be satisfied. That's oddly specific. <laughs> Just saying. 
Just saying. Um, but I like pairing that because it I mean you really you can't do anything. The uh, the choco pie, yeah, that Elijah Craig. I loved I love getting that kind of snickerdoodle thing. But I think my favorite my favorite experience was definitely the last one we had. I think that one made the most unique pairings. I'm gonna leave a few of these so you can take a video of them and get them posted so people can at least see what they. Oh, look I like. gotta take a picture of them and put it on there. Yeah, since I got your Funko Pop still, so. Yeah, um, I, I do want to ask. You know, we got away from it. What if you could pair anything with the choco pie? What are you going for? Anything with the choco pie? Yeah, like not just limited to these bottles that we had for that kind of international or accessibility. Honestly, I would like to try a rye, a maple, like a maple finished rye. Okay, I would like to see what it's like if you kind of get more maple into that kind of um the marshmallow feeling in that honey, maple, honey, marshmallow, but also Michter's toasted rye. That's a really good call. Graham, like add more graham cracker and ump the marshmallow a little bit. You making a s'mores over there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Chocolate s'more. I think you want to try that? I mean, we can, Here. we can Talk to for sure. For a uh, and then I'm if I'm if I'm picking anything out, I, I would probably go toasted rye too. I've had some Nulu toasted rye that are pretty good that I think would go with it. And uh, I'm trying to think, did I say anything for the first one? Like what I pair with the the conscious? Um, yeah, I thought we did. I know you did. I don't know if I did. I, I feel like a Old Forester 1910 would be good with it. Ooh, I like that. All right. Hmm. So, one more pairing before we move on. Do I need to get another choco pie? Probably. I think. Did I eat the other half of my choco? Pie? Yeah, I did. Well, that might be the best snack because we. They ate they are really small. I mean, compared to like the ones you get like gas stations and stuff of the moon pies, those things are huge. I, I mean, that's a manhole cover right there. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a Ninja Turtle move that thing around a few times. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. Here you go. All right. Michter's Toasted Barrel Strength Rye. And uh, was it honey? No, tea? Yeah, so it's um, brown. Is it black sugar or brown sugar? Black sugar milk tea. Yeah. All right. Which I think, honestly, if you wanted to try that, just like the actual drink itself, not Michter's, even though that is good. Usually you get that stuff from boba shops. Boba? If, if you're in the U.S. and you're looking for some place to just Not grab really one. Into boba. Isn't that the little bubble? <sighs> yeah, little I can't things? do it. I don't know what it. There's some disconnect in my head. I turn into a human pea shooter. I can't seem to. <laughs> you look like. You look like. What was it on Mario? The things that shoot the little boot. boot yeah, that's boot. me. I I mean I'm over there choking to death, and I'm just I don't even like the flavor that much. So there's nothing in it for me. Oh, dude, I love that pour. That is, it's. Ooh. Yeah, you were dead on with the graham cracker. Yeah, dude, it's graham cracker heaven. Yeah, all right, I'm going to pour it over. Oh, dude, that might be the one. I'm thinking that's the desert island. Patreon.com, find out what else Swan took to the desert island. Yeah. This I'm taking this to the desert island, man. This is yeah. the dessert. That is, that is really good. There's some s'mores in there. The rye kicks through, which is a good call because, I mean, it is tea. It's supposed to be herbal. I think when you're doing, there's nothing wrong with pairing low proof stuff. Yeah. I do think when you have a snack or even food, a steak, anything that's got like a bold flavor, if you really want the whiskey to come through, you've got to have a little proof on it. You do. I think that's why this little. This little thing, this little bun works well with these because it doesn't overpower the whiskey. The whiskey is actually heavier than that. Now, the choco pie, that can work kind of both ways. Yeah. The Luminati, or what, what do we call this thing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just calling it a bourbon cookie until bourbon we can cookie. figure it out. It's it, it's good. It's good. It's very, because it's light. You That cookie in there, or that like, little crunch is very light. So 
if we had any bold snacks, like stuff that had a lot of like punch to it, it would be hard to pair some of these lower proof stuff. I think yeah. Turkey 101 and Rebel 100 would be good. Now the new riff probably would. Yeah, we didn't open that one, but no, I I agree because I mean even the first one, I don't even know if the flavor was necessarily better on my my pairing over yours, but mine had more proof, so we were both like, hey, that's yeah. that's where it's at. Exactly, exactly. Well, it's a mess over here. <laughs> Yeah, it's a mess. It's nice that the camera only goes to about right here. You yeah, know? exactly. Um, so yeah, that's pairing with Swan. Um, I appreciate you teaching me. You're welcome. Uh, I will take all that I've learned and I will put it to good use. I may start a MySpace page. MySpace would be a good place to start. I think that would be a good one. Um, I may go on Omegle <laughs> and do some pairings. I can't. Please make a video. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mutant on Omegle does pairings. I, I don't know how that... I mean, it would be funny to watch, don't get me wrong, but I could not imagine looking at some know. person that's like trying to learn English, <laughs> barely speaks it, and they're just on there to like talk to random people, and you're like, son, get out your wild turkey 101. We're doing this damn thing. <laughs> it's like a 12-year-old, and they're like, huh? <laughs> yeah. Because hmm. I've seen a lot of people actually use that. They go in and they try out like new like language they've learned with, with people and just to watch them just have their minds blown by, Hey, get out that 130 proof whiskey we got last week. We're going to do this damn thing. Like, I think that I would think be... you need to do this. <laughs> I think this needs to be your thing. That's fair. I can, I might be able to do that. I better see this happen. <laughs> Swan, do you have any high proof hot takes? Anything that pisses you off right now? Something that's just, you know, you want to get off your chest. Hmm. Honestly, just the price. I, I will say, like of things now, because like I, I when took you went a, to shop and do all this stuff, you're yeah, like, what the? I mean, don't get me wrong, it's everything, and we don't got to get into the reasons or any of that. But like bourbon specifically, like it's just jumped like a crazy amount, dude. You're telling me, yeah. So I mean, that's part of why I was like, I got to thin down because look at all these options that are already paid for. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, like I remember when I started at Total Wine. It was sixteen ninety nine for a fifth of one hundred one. How much was Chestnut Farms or Hills? <laughs> what is it? Chestnut Farms. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Oh man, uh, not available in Kentucky. At least not when I worked there. Um, but yeah, no, it was. It, that's gone up to all of it has. It really is like everything. Like m- me and April always complain about the groceries because we're like, we just spent this much money on barely like two days worth of groceries it's insane yeah food all the stuff yeah don't even get me started on bourbon stuff because i can't figure out you know what my high proof hot take is i can't figure out what people want to hear do people want to hear my honest thoughts on price or do they want to say we all know we all know price is up you don't have to complain about it so much i don't know what do they want? I mean, that's why I wanted to do this a little bit. And I think it, it brings it back around to what we got on the table. But, like, all of these are affordable. You can find them. There's very – outside of the new riff, which I think they're in, like, 30-something states now. So they're probably where you're at. Uh, you can get these most places. And all the prices on these, other than maybe, like, the Woodford, has stayed decently steady. Mm-hmm. Like, they're, they're probably still in a range where I would not go, man, that price, you yeah. know? Most of them are available in a 175 – a handle, I redeem myself there again pregame, um, but yeah, it's um, they're they're good staples. I think there's other good staples too that you just might not be able to find them unless you're in Kentucky. Gotcha. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I don't have anything else on high proof politics. My high, like I said, I don't know what people want. Do they want to hear me yell about price, or do they want me to chill? I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. Honestly, if it's a limited edition product, I think you should just throw the price out the window anymore. That is a good point. I think if it's, yeah, if it's something that you can get normal, like on the shelf and it keeps going up and up and up and you're used to paying like $19.99, now it's 30 or something, I think you have a right to complain. Yeah. I mean, if, like, if Wild Turkey comes out with two products right now, one's another Rick House thing at 300 bucks, you know, you're an oversee. New Master's Keep is going to be over 300. New Master's Keep, that's fine. Like, I can't really complain about the price at that point, unless they've got another product that's like the exact same age. Would you pay $500 for? Um, what was it? The generations, the where it's like the Eddie Russell and um, oh, 
Uh oh. Should we answer it or should we not? Let's do it. It'll make him happy. Watch this. Watch this. You have reached the voicemail box of This Is My Burn podcast. We are currently recording a podcast, and per HR, we were asked to turn all our phones off uh, while we record because it messes up the flow of stuff and the editing. So please leave a message after the beep. Beep. You're really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, boys. How's How's it going? You're really just going to let me talk by myself. Okay, that's fine. All right. Well, um, I hope you're having a good episode. I love you. I guess I'll I'll see you later. Beep! Bye. That was so mean. Should we call him back? We should call him back. Yeah, I died. He's already crying. <laughs> that was wrong, <rough>, man. <laughs> <laughs> we took we took a bet that how how fast it would take you to your eyes to water up after I hit uh the hang up button. <laughs> you bet on whether or not I was gonna cry? Yeah. Wow. Swan one. Okay. Swan one. Thanks, thanks for that, I guess. <laughs> what are you well, doing? I'm I'm editing the uh the Altschuler bonus episode that we still haven't put out yet. Oh. Man. How long does that take to edit? How long does it take to edit? Yeah. Um I I usually I uh, it de- it depends. I I take a couple of nights for a full episode for a a bonus episode it usually takes me about a um i don't know like an afternoon well i'm just gonna let you know right now we had a lot of fun it was great it'll be a fun listen but you're gonna need about three times the amount of normal (laughs) days to to edit we were curious how many times we could say cunt without getting in trouble (laughs) are you still recording yeah we just got done with hyper pot takes when you called Oh, good. Well, I called at the exact right time then. It's it's Barrel Rings, apparently. This is Barrel. If you want to be on Barrel Rings, which is the segment of the show where you can call in, if you call in at the right time, we may answer. You can call 859-428. Sing it, Perry. 8253. 859-428-8253. You can leave a voicemail. You can leave a text message. We'll read it out there. And this is the first time we've done this in a while. And it's funny that Perry's the one on. Hey, how about that? So, Perry, let me ask you a question. Okay. What is your favorite sandwich? Ooh, my favorite sandwich ever? Mm, That you could get, like, just... You could just go get right now. Right now, uh-huh. okay. Um, my favorite sandwich ever that I could go get right now would probably be the. I mean, just in general, like an Italian sub. Okay. Mm, big Subway okay. guy. Mm. Um, big fan of Jared. I heard he is. <laughs> Um, I would say the, the Italian sub from Penn Station. Ooh. Penn Station like, has the messiest subs ever, and they're so good. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. They do. And, like, I was a recent, a recent within, like, the past five years, um, I, a convert to Jersey Mike's. Uh-huh. uh-huh. But I, P- Penn Station will always be, I think the the gold standard for like a hot sub gotcha okay so okay well italian italian sub from if you if you want to find out what swan likes um you can listen to patreon because he answered that is there anything you want us to mention on the show um we did tell the truth about how the show started at the beginning i won't tell you anything about that that's fine. Yeah, I know. I knew that was going to have to come out eventually. Yeah. So, so. they all know now. Um, uh, I don't think so. I'll be back in a few weeks. 
Um, just know in the meantime, I'm still editing behind the scenes. Uh, if people don't know, uh, uh, Eric's got a new podcast out too. It's a small Disney podcast. Is that your tips and bits? Your you're plugging my yeah. podcast right now. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna plug God. your podcast because I know you're too you're too humble to do it yourself. Oh yeah, I already had a documentary I was gonna tell about. Wasn't even thinking about mine. So. <laughs> I'll plug it for you. I got you. Oh yeah, uh, plug something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's it. I just okay. wanted to call and say hey, and uh, this counts as an official appearance for me on my own podcast. That's so. why you did this. <laughs> your numbers. Get out of here. Go take care of a child. I hear your baby crying, and you, you came over here to just call us, like yep. offer numbers. Jesus, yeah, yeah. what yeah. kind of person is this one? Love you, boys. Talk to you later. Love you, too. Take care of your child. Mm, kiss, kiss. Bye, Bye Dad. Bye. Yeah, yeah. Bye-bye. Off. He tries to call like he's checking on us. He's just wanting to try to say he consistently is on the podcast. Well, this is his third baby, and we're babysitting it. We're That's we're true. we're not very trustworthy. So. Why don't he just do like all the other babies people do and put cameras in there so they could watch while they're babysitting? What is that? Shit. He's got a live feed right now. That's how he knew when to call. Okay, I guess we better get back on track. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything to recommend, Swan? Are we doing? Are, is this tips and bits? Tips and bits. Yeah. I, see, I didn't even do it right. Yeah. It's time for tips and bits. The portion of the show where we recommend something doesn't have to be bourbon related. It can be something we're watching, reading, playing, or just anything in general. Sometimes I like to talk about, you know, shopping carts. You know. Ooh, that's a rough one. Yeah, shopping carts. I'm it, honestly surprised you called it a shopping cart, not a buggy. Shopping carts, buggies. Oh yeah, that's true. I usually do say buggies. Usually, I like to say tips and bits. But just put the put the shopping cart back. Put the buggy back. That's a good one. I that's like not that. mine this week, but you get the gist. Tips and bits. What you got, Swan? All right, I got, I got two for you. Two. Let's you hear them. Let's hear them. All right, first one. Bourbon on the banks. Okay, I'm going tomorrow. Uh, I love this event. It's something I go to every year. I actually work it most of the time, but it's also just fun. Uh, it is a smaller event. Don't get me wrong. It's not your, your big, classic, tons of things going on, huge concerts. It's a little bit more walk around, get some drinks, good people. Nice. So if you're like me and you're a little bit more introverted, maybe you don't want you know to be rubbing elbows with people, good pours, good people, good additional things Have you ever buy. rubbed an elbow and it felt uncomfortable? Now that you mention it, no. Is this a therapy session? Go ahead. Get it out of the way. Ooh. See, it doesn't feel too bad. Ooh. You didn't like that, did you? I don't like that. I kind of liked it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Second tip. You got a podcast. I want to hear about it. <sighs> now, the reason is, is because I went to Disney for the first time since 2001, mm -hmm. earlier this year. Mm -hmm. And... I went with a lot of other people who know Disney really well, mm -hmm. and they were telling me, hey, try this, hey, try this, and I'm like, this is really what they enjoy. i got to have somebody who's just as bourbon-minded and likes the goofy, fun stuff at Disney that's not just like the common, like, hey, I saw this on Instagram kind right, of thing. Right, right, right. I wanted to know the deep dives, you know? And you told me, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little into detail here. Do it, do it. You're like, all right, you're going to go to Mexico at Epcot, and you're going to ask for a, a corn old-fashioned. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I was like, okay, cool. And I waited in line. It took a while. That place was always busy. Compared to most places at Epcot, it is a hole in the wall. Right. Yeah. And, it is literally a hole in the wall. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm sitting there thinking, like, what am I getting myself into? And I get up there, and I'm looking at the menu, and it's not even there. But you get inside, and they've got a full menu, and you're looking at it, and you're like, oh, okay, there it is. And I'm reading through it, and I was like, every single one of these ingredients sounds disgusting. Why the heck am I getting this? They put it together. I took a sip, and I got back in line for a second one before I even <laughs> finished it. <laughs> it's so good. It is ridiculously good. So I, I feel like if you listen to the show and you you like the things that Eric likes, and then you plan on doing a Disney trip, take his advice. It is worth it. So I'm going to uh, plug that. I'll plug it, yeah. It's a small Disney podcast. Me and my wife, April, we started it. It's just it's just a podcast basically about... So most of the podcasts and like YouTube videos you watch, these people go to Disney every week. Like they live there, they go yeah. there, and it's like it's almost like the same thing, but, you know, there's a lot of good ones. 
But you don't really get a lot of like, what's it like if I can only go to Disney every couple months? Or maybe I only go once a year. Or like getting the best out of your trip. And we just want to share like what we do to make sure we're getting the best out of it. Because we can't just turn around and come back next week and be like, oh, we'll just do it next week. Yeah. And we each episode is going to cover just like one theme. So maybe like one like bar, maybe like one experience, maybe like one tip or something like that. So it's out now. By the time this comes out, um, episode two will be out next Thursday. So maybe yeah, if Perry's uh, doing his normal schedule. This will drop on a Wednesday and then the next episode will be on a Thursday. So I try to put it out to where the Disney podcast comes out the day after the bourbon podcast. So it's not on the same day, but you get, you get more content. You get more me. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is there ever enough of me around here? I Probably. Mean, I, I had to take a year break from you. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> no, I will say I, I, was a person I did not think I would enjoy going to Disney as much as I did. And after getting some tips from you, I was like, oh, this is sick. I may not be the biggest fan of like going to the character breakfast and hanging out with Mickey, but there's great things in Epcot and I had a great time. I think, I think a lot of people, they don't realize how fun it is until they actually do it because they think on the outside, you think it's just a bunch of kids stuff and a bunch of that, but they really do cater to all ages. Like, yeah. that's the fact that there's bars and there's cocktails and there's things you can do and you can also enjoy like the little stuff too. you know what a big tip you gave me when i was going i know we're getting in the weeds with this so I'll, I'll i'll make it quick but i was a person that i thought of disney as just the parks and then the second i got over to the polynesian and, and the contemporary resort hopping and i started looking into like oh they've got a bar here and a bar here and they've got this and the grand floridian's got this and i'm like that's actually pretty cool did you listen to me record last night Mm-mm. because episode two is about resort hopping it's and literally episode two is resort hopping yeah i mean i i looked at it as you're either at epcot you're at hollywood or you're and that's all you're, you're at doing. magic kingdom yeah and that's it and the second that like both you and the people I went with were like, oh, we're going to take a day to resort hop. I'm like, you want me to do what on the Skyline right oh, now? Man, Just back and forth? Back and forth? Get on the yeah. monorail? Wow. I'm good on that, but no, it was great. Yeah, that's the, yeah, that's one of my favorite things to do. Well, I appreciate that. Um, I did have a quick tips and bits uh, as well. On Netflix, there's a new wrestling documentary called Mr. McMahon. Okay. And if you want to really see how big of a piece of shit Vince McMahon is then watch this I'm sure if you enjoy wrestling you've probably seen like Dark Side of the Ring on uh, Vice like they used to the Dark Side of this Dark Side of that so they went over a lot of stuff that happens in this but this really goes in the detail of Vince McMahon himself and some of the stuff that he did and it's pretty crazy like it, it is wild I they they put it together well it doesn't feel like one of those documentaries where they're just like trying to like cut things together like all these stories i remember when they happen i remember things were going on and they show you i highly recommend whether you like wrestling or not i did enjoy that it touched on like the early days of wrestling when they called it territories where like this wrestling federation was over this couple states this federation and basically vince decided I, he's going to break the unwritten rule He's going to try to take over all these territories. And then he started making enemies and it really touches into that. And it does a lot. Even if you don't like wrestling, it explains it enough how it works to where you get intrigued. So Mr. Yeah. McMahon on Netflix. I've not watched that yet, but there is, I did just listen to a podcast about like uh, the McMahon stuff and how he treated the whole Chris Benoit case. Uh -huh. And like, even just that little tidbit, that was, it's, it's pretty crazy. It's insane. It's pretty crazy. Well, we, we have been doing a thing called Poor Me, Poor You, where we do one last pour. And I know we've had quite a bit. I want to do one sip of something on the table that you brought that we didn't open, and I want you to pick it, and we're just going to drink on it as we close out the show here. Okay. Gotcha. Anything, anything. The bullet. You picked out the bullet. Yeah. I, I think, honestly, I overlook bullet a lot, but... After picking it up on vacation a couple of times. You know, I don't think... Not I, bad. I don't think I have... I don't think I bought a regular bottle of just Bullet, like the 90 proof, in a long time. I've had picks. I've done all that. I've not had just regular old Bullet in a while. It holds up. 
I wish they would start doing this on like flights and stuff instead of Jack Daniels. No offense, even though you did great this episode. <laughs> you Strong did great. showing. Strong showing. Proud of you, kid. Good job, JD. You did good. That smells really good. Yeah. At least something to be desired on like the proof aspect of it. You know, it. the finish is really like fruity on that. Mm, not bad. How much is Bullet these days? Do you know? I don't. I have How no much clue. was this? I think that was like five bucks. Five bucks? Bullet. Get a get a bottle for five yeah. bucks. Are you, you paying the cute tax on that one? Yeah. Though? You know what else you can do for five dollars? What's that? You can join the Patreon. Oh yeah. That's you right, can support the show. You five dollars is where it's at. You can you can throw us some change and be like thumbs up for a dollar. But at five dollars you get all the bonus content. You get the, this episode uncut a day early. You get anything we did on the pregame chats, any of our special shows we do on there. Best place to support the show is on Patreon, patreon.com slash mybourbonpodcast. If you want to get some merch and apparel, you can go to bourbonshop.threadless.com. If you want to send an email for some reason, I mean, some people like to be professional. Send a little email. This is mybourbonshop at gmail.com. Uh, like we mentioned before, we got a voicemail and a text message line, 859-428-8253. If you also want to send some samples or maybe you have a bottle to review or just a package, some snacks, you want to send me some snacks, you can send it to our P.O. Box. P.O. Box, I have to look it up because Perry always says it. 22609 Lexington, Kentucky, 40522. Send some stuff there. That will be amazing. If you want to follow us on all social media, you can follow the show at My Bourbon Pod. You can follow me at Whiskey Mutant. You can follow Perry at P Ritter 1792 And Swan, where can they follow you? Oh, almost nowhere anymore. I don't hardly check anything. Uh, but I think it's at Swan TBF on Instagram. You you did a great job. Not much is going on there, though. You did a great job of plugging yourself. Except I'll, I'll send uh, Eric some reels every now and then. You you, <laughs> you all ain't not even on that level. Like That's the top tier Patreon right there. <laughs> that's the top tier Patreon. <laughs> Woo boy! Um, you can watch this show if you're listening on YouTube. This is my Burn Podcast on YouTube. All the episodes go up there, video versioned. Uh, Perry, when he is not on paternity leave, goes live every Thursday night. And you need to like, comment, subscribe, leave a review, all the stuff. Swan, I think that's an episode. We've ate that snacks, is, yeah. we've drank whiskey, we've made a mess. Perry's called and checked on us. He's definitely scared. I mean, he should be, in fairness. Uh, but I found out those Choco Pies. Those things are good. Choco Pies. Yeah. Remember that. Well, we'll see you next time. I'm Eric. And I'm Swan. And this is my Bourbon Podcast. We killed it. We we did. Like that's top top one episode ever. <laughs> Is it really? <laughs> First one, best. <laughs>